Now, in verse 4, "...when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning." You see, God's people must be prepared to enter the kingdom. That brings up a very pertinent question, does it not, for you and me today? Are you fit today for heaven? Right now, suppose God took you to heaven as you are right now. Would you be fit for heaven? I can't answer it for you, but there's going to have to be a great deal of repair work done on Vernon McGee to make him ready for heaven. And that is what life is all about. It's just a school preparing you for eternity. A great many people think this is all, and they're making a very sad mistake. Preparation is being made here for eternity. And the question is, and it's something for you to think about, maybe in your odd moments or when you're lying on your bed at night, are you fit for heaven? Suppose God took you to heaven as you are right now. Would you be a square peg in a round hole? I'm afraid that I would. And that's the wonderful thing. Beloved, it doth not yet appear what we shall be. He's going to have to make some changes. Verse 5, And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, upon her assemblies, a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night, for upon all the glory shall be a defense. Now the glory of God will be upon every house in the kingdom, not just on the temple. What a glorious thing it'll be. Verse 6, And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and a covert from the storm and from rain. In other words, security will come to the nation Israel in that day. And they today do not have peace. Therefore, this prophecy is not being fulfilled. They're not back in the land in fulfillment of prophecy. When they are, every man will dwell under his vine and his fig tree in peace. And notice here the order. Peace always follows grace and mercy and cleansing. You can't have peace in the world. And as we've said before, the problem has never been in a political party and the problem has never been way over yonder in a foreign country. The problem is in the human heart today. We war because it's in our hearts. Man is a warlike creature today because he's a sinner, and he won't deal with that question. And when you deal with that question, you can then deal with the question of wars. When you settle one, we're going right into another. We've always done it, and we haven't changed. 